So the horizontal drilling comes around, and you know, like I said, you feel like we're sitting on something here. We've we've really found something. Well, it it came around really, really slow. Uh, you know, it is a sequence of a lot of different things happening uh, that basically gave us the ability, an idea we could even do it. Uh, a lot of it was uh, highly directional work that we was doing on the edges of uh, cities or under cities, and. Uh, uh, right here under Oklahoma City, for instance, and was in contract drilling business, so it was we could do that and knew we could do it and did uh, drill wells under the Oklahoma City, drill sixteen wells is under the city of Enid, uh, highly deviated wells, um, and we found out that uh, a lot of these angle wells and uh, where you were in the zone uh, in the formation. Quite a bit longer we produce uh, considerably better, and uh, uh, so anyway, we uh, thought, "Wow, this is we need to try this." So we did uh, as early as I think 1978 uh, in West Oklahoma, in Cleveland, and uh, so anyway, it, it uh, one of the first field we we started looking for. Uh, uh, formations that we could try this in that would be adaptable to it. And we found one, finally, uh, in uh, North Dakota, uh, in a Cedar Creek, along the Cedar Creek Anacline, and which really extended the field up there. It had been drilled uh, right on the crest of the Anacline uh, uh, and with vertical wells, and they'd gone kind of far as they could. Uh, with that uh, production, uh, but they ran out of it being commercial. And so we came in and, and took leases uh, uh, down this thing, uh, 250,000 acres of leases, in fact, and uh, uh, and and tried a couple wells. You mentioned the Peterson. That was one of them. Uh, that was one of the first ones, uh, Ed and the Ponderosa. And we started with two rigs uh, on on that uh, extension of that field, and and uh, what really the shock was that I had in the book uh, at night you could not see one rig from the other. That's how far apart we was with the first two wells we started with, and I thought, wow, this is. A, <laughs> I hope this thing. Uh, is as big as I think it is, <laughs> uh, and it was. Uh, and uh, these make great wells. Uh, it wouldn't produce vertically, uh, but horizontally, you know, we had seven hundred barrel day production. Uh, so this turned out to be a a really good uh, confirmation for horizontal drilling, and this became the first ever oil field drilled. Uh, strictly with horizontal wells. There was not any vertical wells uh, in this 75-mile extension. Yeah. So, Is that, at that moment, do you realize that America can be energy dependent, you know, like doesn't have to worry about anybody else, we can, so because of that find? Or were you kind of thinking? Well, like it was a, it was a rev, big revelation to me. Yeah. It, it, I don't think at that time we were thinking totally that America could be energy independent, uh, that came later, okay. uh, which wasn't a whole lot later. Uh, there's hardly anybody involved with horizontal drilling at this time. Mm -hmm. In fact, that entire field development on Cedar Creek Anacline, us, uh, Continental, and Burlington Resources, one other company, uh, was the only two companies ever drilled a well in it. Uh, so it's very, very rare for anybody else to even be involved. Um, but when really uh, began to think that uh, America had a chance to become energy independent was after we found the Bakken and, uh, and began developing it mm -hmm. and saw, and particularly after we unlocked the code uh, of the, the shales themselves. 
uh, and that was in, within the Bakken. And uh, probably by 2010, uh, I was thinking that we could we could truly become energy independent in this country, mm-hmm. and, uh, and started to profess that a little bit. <laughs> and of course, people didn't believe me. Right. <laughs> <laughs>